so it's a rare opportunity to step back in time, see what 1929 travel was like. This was one of uh, 199 built by Henry Ford, the EAA's 1929 Ford Trimotor. Uh, Henry Ford's mostly known for putting the world on wheels with his Model T that came out in 1908. Well, later he got interested, uh, mostly via his son Edsel, in aviation. And he decided uh, that was there was an opportunity there, mostly for the younger people, as he said, and gave the credit to Edsel, but Henry Ford decided to make uh, commercial aviation viable. Uh, Henry Ford went on, uh, uh, built the trimotor through 1933 in the Depression, slowed things down, but he did a lot of great firsts uh, to highlight just a few points. Uh, trimotor was the first airliner to offer coast-to-coast -coast service. 1929 took a total elapsed travel time, if you can imagine today, of 48 hours. Uh, trains were expensive. You're going to spend a few days at least on a train and a lot of money. And if you wanted to drive, you had to be quite adventurous because it would take at least a month and usually six weeks average drive time from coast to coast. Uh, to frame this up, in the mid-20s, there were no commercial airlines operating. There were some airmail routes, and they were pioneering flights with airmail being delivered between cities, but no people yet on a regular basis. So this particular airplane uh, came out of the factory in uh, August of 29, and it's finished as uh, the interior, as you guys can see, uh, is just about replicated what it was brand new. Back in the 20s, uh, aviation was not at all accepted uh, by the public. So what's really remarkable about this airplane is uh, Henry Ford uh, really uh, gave the commercial uh, airlines a a proper venue to, to coax the pilot, the, the, the flying public into flying. So the pilots at the time were known as swashbuckling, you know, barnstorming heroes like Waldo Pepper. They were ex-World War One. Planes were kind of ratty. There, there were no regulations yet. Not until 1926. So they would come in in an old World War I Gen E or a standard J1 like you've seen in the Waldo Pepper movie and sell rides. And it wasn't very reliable. And so when people wanted to go fly on an airline when that was first offered, they were very scared. So Henry Ford said, safety first. So three engines. So the trimotor, the redundancy of it, you can, uh, just like a modern airliner, if one engine fails on takeoff or gives you problems, you can still fly in any two just fine, fly around, come back and land. So the safety factor is why it has three. Henry Ford built the first all metal passenger airliner that was successful in America. And uh, the uh, Trimore, he began mass producing, so out of the 199, today everyone wants to know how many of these are left flying. Well, the answer is eight of them are airworthy, but the EAA, which is the Experimental Aircraft Association based in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. They're the only ones that operate these on a sightseeing uh, passenger hauling business.